Good day. Last week's video I suggested I wasn't 100% well, and uh, but I would work through it. Well, unfortunately I was at the beginning of something, not the end. And so um, at the moment, my, uh, my brain isn't working quickly enough for me to feel confident using the machines I've got here. Uh, I've found in the past that if I'm not uh, on top of my game, I can uh, break things, damage things, waste material, all the rest of the stuff. So this week's video, unfortunately, isn't going to any involve any actual machining. Instead, I'm talking about laying things out um, and using some of the old uh, manual techniques, which some of you probably haven't heard of. So um, sorry about that. Hopefully better by the time the next video comes out. These are all styles of caliper that I use in the workshop. There is a, a, a even larger pair of dividers that um, I have but I, I haven't pulled those out. So just running through them, uh, these are inside calipers so used for the inside of a bore and these are outside calipers used for a diameter or something like that. Not used very much these days, um, they're more um, one of those things before you know lathes were um, had dials on them and all that sort of thing. The, still, the woodworkers still use them, um, you know, so certainly not uh, detracting from them. But if you can imagine, if you've got a spinning shaft, uh, you don't want to be using these um, to try and measure the outside diameter because uh, if it grabs you, you've got all sorts of, of pain. So usually uh, they, they don't get used. Then you've got these ones. These are odd leg calipers. This is, a, this is what's called a friction joint. And as the name suggests, the, the joint relies entirely on friction. These aren't too bad for running along the edge of something like that, okay, which is what you use them for. However, what I've found is that they, if you're not careful, if you if you twist these a bit or something like that, they can tend to open out. So you'll find that, you know, the, the start of the line might be there somewhere, the end of the line is um, uh, up here, and so you don't get a, a line parallel with the edge, you get a, a slanted line. So what I did to fix that was I made up a set of these. And these are um, a set of dividers, and I chopped off the ends and did some modifications, put a scriber point on there, and so I can dial that up to a particular size, and it'll stay there. Um, so you know, these these are a homemade thing, but I, I would suggest that if you're if you're the sort of person who who does marking out with with odd legs, that it might be a worthwhile thing to do. The other two here are what's referred to as dividers. Um, I've got two sizes here. And that's simply because once you start getting past about there somewhere, it starts getting a little bit awkward uh, to, to handle. So I've got a larger set that I can use for uh, bigger diameter circles. I'll show you how a few of the things you can use these for in a little while. These got a round uh, shaft to them, leg to them. I used to have a set which in fact, I might, even, I might have even converted it, which were flat. And the problem with that is that it hasn't got as much rigidity that way. And so um, it, can, it can bend a bit. These are, these are much firmer feel. To add to the collection, uh, a couple of things you're gonna need is a, is a rule. Uh, this is a, this is a um, six inch rule. And I just use that because it's a convenient size to stick in a pocket. Uh, but you know, any size that you've got, if, it, if it's the size you need, is fine. A scriber and a square. The scriber is a carbide tip scriber. Uh, you can get them in plain steel but if you're doing things with stainless then a, then a carbide tip is probably a better better move. One of the first things that I'll do when I'm marking out uh, well sheet metal but anything really is check the corners for square and that one is all right. That one's not too bad those two there are, are, are not good, but what I'll then do is I'll get my texture and I'll put a symbol there. And that's just to remind me that that's the square corner. And so when I'm measuring out to get orthogonal measurements, that's the corner that I use as, as the reference. And that just saves me from measuring from you know the wrong side or the wrong corner. And so measuring some from here and some from there and all that sort of thing. You want to try and measure from the same datum edges uh, to, to get your maximum accuracy out of that. We've got a bit of material. We know that's the square side. What do we want to do with it? Well, we're going to mark it out with some, for, for some purpose. The two things I usually use are either a, a scriber or I'll sometimes use a pencil. Um, 
The pencil is nice because if you've got a, a notch sensitive material like aluminium and you want to bend it, uh, the, pen, the pencil doesn't put a, a mark on the, um, the corner which may uh, start a split. So uh, worth thinking about. For most things, scriber is fine. Certainly for steel, I, I, I don't worry too much about it. First thing is finding the centre of a piece of material like this. Uh, you've all done this one, I'm sure. But you're going across the corners. And there you are, there's a the centre. One of the things you can also use to find centres is odd leg calipers, because what that means is that you can you can do that from both sides, you don't have to set it um, exactly. Get a mark and, and you can pick the difference between it. If you're using a pencil because you don't want to mark the material, um, I've got several of these stashed around the place. This is a this is a kid's school compass, but I find that if you get the, the pencil just a little bit above the, the point, you can do the same sort of thing with that. Another variation of that is using your calipers. This is 130 wide, so if I put this on 65, I could use this. One trick with these though, is that um, because of the difference here, you might have a cosine error. And so one of the tricks I do usually use is I put a ruler or the edge of the square against the material so I can run against that like so. Okay. Some people don't like using their calipers for scribing. Uh, certainly for something soft like aluminium, I don't think it hurts them. Um, but that's your choice. Uh, I do it occasionally. I try not to. One thing I haven't mentioned is marking out. You can buy various uh, marking out liquids. And I used to have some of that stuff around the place, some dye chem I think it was. Wonderful stuff. But these days I go down to Officeworks or one of the, the big stationery stores and just buy some thick textures. And so I'll put a, a splodge of texture where I want to mark things out and that'll, that'll do me. All right, I've got a, a centre marked on there. And supposing I'm going to cut a, a disc out of this. So I need to have something that I can locate the end of a divider in. And so I've got a couple of these. This one came from my friend Bob in the West, which is an automatic centre punch. Um, so you, you push on those things and there's a, there's a mechanism in there that, that gives it a sudden thump. That gives me just enough of a dimple that I can put a set of dividers in like that and then go around and mark. Now if I wanted to cut that out what I'd probably do is I'd do it like that I'd then go and put some text over the top of that and then I'd do it again so I had a much better contrast. As it is I can see that and that's not a problem. What can we do with that? Well the next thing that we can do is subdivide that. Now that's easy enough to do because if I grab my square, I can put that there and scribe a line. So I've now got this divided into two points. There's one there and one there. The other thing that was taught to me by my grade seven teacher was how to bisect a, a circle. For that you need the, the, the dividers open a bit more, but what you do is you basically swing an arc like that, come to the other point, swing another arc, and what that'll give you that point and that point so there and there will be 90 degrees. So if you want to back out four points on a on a PCD that would be one way of doing it. What happens if I want six points on my on my PCD? Well if I set my dividers to the radius of the, the circle I can then walk them round and I should get, there we go, three divisions there. And 
there and back there. That didn't quite match up but that's probably more because I haven't got these bot on the diameter so I've actually done this before where I've, I've gone around a couple of times so I've said right I need to, to just bring that out a smidge I'll go back and do that until I, I get a you know nice six equal divisions. Now once you've got either two divisions or three divisions or, or six um, it doesn't really matter you can of course subdivide between those points so you know swing once again adjusting the dividers but swing an arc there swing an arc there and that'll give you a midpoint between those two as long as you keep the dividers the same distance apart um, so the two arcs are equal you can swing those and you get a, a, a point or a pair of points if the material is big enough that will give you a, a, a line that divides those two things. Now suppose I had a line say from here to there which I wanted to divide into say five parts. What I can do, get my square out again, put a line up there and then using my rule, put one end on that on that mark there and get the five there on my vertical line and then I can just come along with those marks I can then come along with my square And between there and there I'll have five equal divisions. One thing I've mentioned before is my circle template. I find this uh, very easy for marking out radii and things like that but also measuring measuring circles. Bearing in mind there's a, uh, a slight allowance for pencil on these things so if I measure the the 30 millimeter hole that's 30.5 so it's designed for a pencil with a 0.5 lead. But if I want to put a radius on there, that's a, a diameter, oh, oh, sorry, R15 radius, so I can use that. Um, and, you know, the classic use is if you've got two lines intersecting like that, you can line up the, 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 the crosshairs here, and that circle should be on the center there. Now one thing too, if you don't want to mark your material at all, one thing you can do, and, and this might also be useful if you've got something like a, a waxy plastic where it doesn't want to um, take a mark very easily, one thing you can do is put masking tape down, mark on the masking tape and use that for your marking out. Another, another trick worth knowing about too, is if you've got a circle and you don't know where the center is, you can still use that bisecting um, trick so there I've just got a, a randomly selected radius and a random point and I could come right over here so not at all you know diametrically opposite and that gives me a line through the through the center of the circle oh that's not through the center of the circle because I've missed my my bisection sorry okay there's my line through the center of the circle Okay, I've now got that. I can come along and do the same thing. I can pick up that point, do it there, come over here, right. so that is now my uh, circle center. So I've found the, the center of the circle. Another trick worth knowing too, if you've got something like uh, a part with a hole in it and you need to pick up the middle of that hole so that you can then put you know, uh, holes on a PCD or you can dimension something from there to there uh, and you haven't got a, um, you know, a mill with DRO where you can just sort of find the centre of that hole, 
the way that I've done it before is got a plug of wood and you could use wood, you could use foam, you could use another bit of metal if you had a bit of aluminium so that you would fit in, into there nicely. So you fill the hole, you can then use whatever technique you like to, to mark the center and then use that as the basis of, of what you're doing. Once you've finished, you've got all your, your, your positional data that you want, you can then knock that plug out, off you go. And uh, finally, I, I guess a warning for, for people, um, if you've got or you haven't got a whole bunch of steel rules and you want to do some, some large measurements, you want to use a retracting tape, you can, but, uh, and this was taught, uh, I, was, I had this told to me by a, a carpenter once, is that don't use the, the, the tip of the, the tape for anything that you need to be exact. Uh, and the reason is that they, are, they will move a little bit and the theory is that it's meant to move the thickness of the, the, uh, the stop here so that when you're measuring on the inside of something and you're measuring on the outside of something, it's still going to be accurate. But of course, you don't know what these things have done, how much they've been beaten up, got sat on, hit, whatever. So uh, just bear that one in mind about retractable tapes. You can use them, but I usually start at, say, the 100 mark and um, you know take off 100 when I make a measurement, just to, to, just to be sure. Anyway, that was a few marking out tips, so uh, thanks for watching, uh, and uh, see you for the next one.